Admiral's Log, August 14th, 1900. In the aftermath of our initial skirmish with the Japanese fleet, a sobering reality has set upon us. Our Navy has faltered against Japan's modernized forces. The sea, unforgiving in its nature, has laid bare the vulnerabilities of our fleet. Amidst these turbulent waters, a crucial confrontation looms. Our battleship Varna is poised to engage with the Japanese battleship Moshun. This upcoming clash is more than a mere battle. It is the ultimate test to our naval capability. The performance of the Varna, a vessel embodying our current naval prowess, is under scrutiny. Its steel and guns, its crew and commanders, all represent the culmination of our existing naval doctrine. Against the Moshun, a symbol of Japan's naval ascendancy, the Varna must not only hold her own, but also demonstrate our potential to rise from this crucible of war. As I await the outcome of this critical encounter, a mix of apprehension and resolve grips my heart. The clash of these titans is not just a test of firepower and armor. It is a trial of our strategic acumen, our adaptability, and our unwavering spirit in the face of adversity. The reverberations of this battle will be felt far beyond the immediate turmoil of war. They will echo in the halls of the Admiralty, influencing pivotal decisions and shaping our naval strategy for years to come. This is a defining moment, one that will either validate our current course or signal the dire need for rapid and radical transformation. With anticipation, I await the dispatches from the front, keenly aware that the lessons gleaned from this confrontation will be instrumental in charting the future course of the Russian Navy. In victory or defeat, the Varna and Moshun will not just be battling for supremacy at sea, but for the forging of a naval legacy. Hey guys, Stealth here, welcome back to the Russian campaign. In the previous episode, we've seen that the Russian Navy desperately needs modernization. These ships are old, these ships are not very capable, but perhaps Varna is. This is one of the Russian battleships that we have at our disposal, packing six 11-inch guns and those 34-inch guns. Problematic is that she is completely untested, she has cadets for crew training. Her enemy is battleship Moshun from the Zuikaku class. She has trained crews. She also sports a lot of secondary guns, but fewer mains. She only has four 10.5 inch guns. Let's see how well these ships will do when they meet in battle. At 12 kilometers, Varna opens up. Her 11 inch guns, unfortunately, only able to use the bow guns. Her primary armament is largely located on the stern. So as much as I dislike using a ship like this, I'm going to have to park her broadside, which does expose her armor belt. Uh, the side belt is 11.8 inches, plus 52%, so she should be able to take a beating. Whether she is capable of taking enough of a beating for the Japanese, I can't tell you yet, because the 10.5 inch guns are not yet in range. Now we do have some other ships around, we have the Captain Crown, with the Amurets, Admiral Lazarev, these ships are going to have to deal some damage of their own. However, not yet. I don't want to risk these ships at the moment. I know that the Russian DDs are generally really bad, and I feel entirely uncomfortable sending them out into a withering storm that is the secondary armament of this Japanese battleship. Because all of these casemates are very, very dangerous to my destroyers. I don't want to test how accurate or inaccurate those casemates appear to be. It is something that the battleship's gonna have to soften up first. I doubt we'll be able to destroy a whole lot of casemates. We might be able to at least soften the ship up and thereby enabling my destroyers to then close the distance and punch way above their weight class with these 16 inch, yeah they're really small, 16 inch torpedoes. Torpedo range is only one and a half clicks. So if I want to use these ships we're gonna have to get in real close anyway. Which leaves me pretty uncomfortable. Varna 
for a cadet crew, has pretty respectable accuracy at 9.5% chance to hit. Of course, we're going to have to fire some ranging shots and hope that that's going to boost the accuracy a bit more. I'm also very interested to see where their light cruisers are at. Here we are. They're probably just set to screening mode or follow mode. Uh, it's an interesting design. Packing a lot of guns. They're seemingly not very big. It's just 4.1s. Uh, but they have a lot of them. They got 12 4.1s, 4 3.5s, and, and then 2 2 inches. So definitely not something that my DDs would like to inspect up close. Not yet. And they have three of these. No, dude, we're not going to try and shoot their light cruisers. The range on these is probably pretty low. Yeah, 3.8. Chance of them hitting me right now, early game, not that good. After a bit of closing in, Varna is now only 6.5 kilometers away from the target. The target, Moshun, should not be that much of a threat. The main belt of Varna is angled well enough. The light cruisers at this point, basically not a threat at all. Their torpedo range is only 3 kilometers. Their secondary, well, primary really, is 3.8. So this does leave the Varna the opportunity to engage the Moshun for a while. And while Moshun at least has some chance to pen the bow and stern of the Varna, I seem to have almost no chance to go through Moshun's armor. My armor piercing capabilities on this ship, well, they're not very good. This has to do with Moshun's very stern fore belt and aft belt. It's uh, basically a 12 inch belt, which means that if Varna wants to pen that 12 inch belt, we'll have to close the distance even more and deal with the angling of this ship. So I think that for now, we're just going to do a little bit of HE damage to her. And as her secondaries are now distracted, we can bring the DDs back in, which have been circling Moshun. They haven't really done that much. They've just been there waiting. Eagerly awaiting their turn. Now, chance to hit is now really good. 33%. We're only four and a half clicks out. And at this point, I have to worry about one more threat that Moshun can point at me. Underwater torpedo launchers for a range of three kilometers. The range is pretty limited, yet cannot be discounted because my battleship probably doesn't turn very well, and getting hit by even one torpedo could be a significant problem. We've only hit them four times, but the damage is just so low in this era. It's toy battleships, mostly. But the secondaries in the Ottawa... Sorry, Ottawa. Not like the Canadian thing. Um, DDs. We had an overpen on Varna by what? A 5.2? Really? Okay. Now, in the previous video, we've seen that the Japanese were able to sink a couple of my convoy ships, thereby definitely getting a few points, which is not something I find very appreciative as a start to the campaign. So, my hope is to be able to sink this convoy of three light cruisers and battleship. Well, not strictly a convoy, more a task force, and get some points back. Because I'll be damned if I lose this first campaign. We are now inside of torpedo range for the light cruiser. We're playing a pretty dangerous game. What's their armor level like? 2 inch main, 0.8 inch aft, plus 50%. These 4 inch guns... Yeah, they pretty much can't pen that. And our main guns are having a hard time trying to see through that smoke screen. I'm largely ignoring the battleship because I'm so well angled that the chances of them dealing damage to me are really quite low. And I'm hoping that I can just eliminate some of the CLs so that my DDs can push in. And it seems to be working as the Kinu took one big hit from the Varna, dead in the water. And now we have a lot of accuracy and we can finish them off. There she goes. That's one. At this point, torpedoes are joining the fight. Full stop. 
with a ship this old, I refuse to hit all back emergency because it is really quite likely that you'll find your torpedo, or rather that your battleship is not able to speed up anymore at all because of its really bad engine. These things took very, very badly to being put in reverse. At least in the game, they do. The DDs are trying to wound Moshun a bit. The Moshun secondaries are engaging my battleship. Even though I am within the range with the DDs. Moshun is backing off. Varna has dodged the torpedo. Sendai and Otowa can still deal damage to her with their torps though. There goes your secondary tower. I've done some serious damage with that mine by debris. And I'm really quite impressed with the amount of damage that the four inchers have done. Focus on Sendai, please. Eliminate this cruiser. And then we're gonna face tank the battleship. And let the DDs rush in. Damn it. <coughs> All stop. Make a turn. Turns also slow you down. This is gonna get pretty close though. Yeah, a little too close. That actually hit me. That is not the type of damage that I am interested in seeing. So I'm really quite happy that this was a dud. Come on, take out Sendai. We're starting to lose structural integrity here. Uh, the Elazarev. You've launched all your torps, right? No, you haven't. You just launched one? Okay. That's not what I was hoping for. Yeah, destroyed funnel. That was good damage. We can probably deal a lot more damage with AP. That is unwelcome. Increased flank. Another torpedo coming in. The CL to turn back out. We're going to turn back to port. I'm getting some very, very light damage in on motion, but it's really not something they're probably concerned about. Come on. I want some actual damage on this light cruiser. I want the Sendai gone. And with the primaries... We should be able to deliver a hammer blow to that ship. There she goes. 2,531 points of damage. Let's see if the Lazarev can rush the battleship. And then have the DDs rush the battleship from a different angle. It's not so much that I want to strictly get rid of the battleship uh, in this particular battle quickly. It's that I want it gone from the strategic map. Because it's a lot of force projection. And on top of that... It's a big slap in the face of the Japanese if we're able to take out one of their battleships. That should send a message that one is not to just harass the Russian Empire and not face consequences. Let's go to one time speed. Got a torpedo coming seemingly at the Lazarev. Hold your horses. Approach angle for the Captain Crown is not very good. Fortunately, the battleship over here has so many different vectors that she needs to be targeting. The battleship, the CL, and now my DDs. That she's going to have a really tough time trying to figure out what to shoot. So all of her guns are pointed at the wrong targets. The torpedoes seem to have missed their mark. I want you to slow down a bit. I want you to get ready. You have torps, one and a half kilometer range. A 29 knots. Moshun, many bulkheads, spacious quarters. Does she have anti torpedo blistering? Yeah, anti torp one. Okay. Smoke yourself up. I hear a torpedo launch. That's the launch from the Amurets. And now from the Crown. The Crown's also coming under fire from the battleship itself. Full pen? With what? Oh, with a 4.9 inch from the the destroy. Sorry, from the cruiser. That's interesting. Sendai is now taking on water. We need to eliminate this ship before Varna comes alongside. And there's the problem. Slow down. Destroyer seems to be narrowly missing. 
we have at least one torp. Two torpedo hits on Moshun. And she's starting to flood. Varna slowing down and trying to turn to starboard. In this point in time, I can send in the Lazarev. She has only one starboard torpedo launcher, so she better make it count. Motion seems to be going really badly. Listing over to starboard. The ship might be doomed. I did lose a DD. What got you? Oh, a 5 venture. And there goes the Amuretz as well. That was fast. You got hit by a 4 inch? What? Like a light cruiser 4 inch? Yeah. Okay, so one light cruiser 4 inch gun can immediately wipe out a destroyer. In this era. Ready torpedo launchers. This is your target. Bring all guns to starboard. And light them up. Varna, still capable of dodging torpedoes. Her secondary is working away on Moshun. Missing the mark, only a kilometer away on Sendai. There goes Sendai. Sendai is gone. Aggressively launch torpedoes. You got one on your ass. Point your ass at the Moshun. That is the starboard torpedo launcher. Moshun desperately tries to avoid that. Or she's stuck in a turn, the latter being more likely. Switch the primary guns from Varna and all of her secondaries over to the Ottawa. And get her moving again. Because she's extremely vulnerable to torpedoes right now. I should be able to outspeed that. Steady as she goes, don't give any additional resistance from the rudder. Where did my torpedo ever go? We did hit him with a torp. Oh, this is not looking good. Varna, I don't care what you do, just get out of there. Yep, that was a hit. One and a half thousand points of damage. That was a 17 inch torpedo. Varna is flooding on her stern compartments. Beyond that, the damage seems manageable. Motion, far worse condition. Mostly flooded. I think Varna will be able to take this hit and keep going. Switch to the Varna. Oh, sorry, switch to the Moshun. We're going to eliminate this ship. She's lost 14% of her crew. Which, considering the amount of flooding, is actually pretty impressive. Smoke up the Lazarev. We did launch another torpedo, and it does look like it's not going to give me anywhere. So I only have one torpedo launcher, and that is on the stern. The rest are not loaded. Getting some decent damage in. Eh, that was okay. We do need better shells for these 11 inchers, because we're simply not getting the damage done. Cycling the torpedo launchers on the Lazarev. This is the scout cruiser, right? It seems to be doing really well. Torpedo in the water. Far now. Change course to port. That was a triple launch from Moshun. She now has three torpedoes left. Switch to the Ottawa. Continue on your turn. You're stuck in a rudder. Sadly. <clears throat> Can we pen this? Not really. We did destroy their main tower just now. I lost a main gun. But seemingly ammunition count is still alright. Switch to high explosive. You're targeting the stern of a battleship. Keep putting pressure on that light cruiser there. Setting some fires on motion. Ooh. Flooding on Varna. That was not great. Starboard side torpedo launcher is ready. Port side torpedo launcher is not. And Varna has an incoming torpedo. I'm very, very, very close to this cruiser here. And that's an actual torpedo. That's a live one. Okay, we're now beautifully alongside here. Slow down a bit. It's really unfortunate that I don't have this torpedo launcher ready yet. 
Getting a couple of partial pens. The crew lost it down to 20%. Really not that bad. Turn. Let's see if we can bring the stern to bear. If we can hit him in the bow, that would be beautiful for flooding. More flooding on her bow is exactly what I need right now. Steady as she goes. Slow down. There's your target, right there. Right behind you. Motion is turning. Making her potentially somewhat unpredictable for a torpedo attack. Go on. Do a full starboard turn. Bring a starboard launcher to bear on Moshun. Ooh, we're getting real attention on the Lazarev right now. Lazarev so far able to get some of these shells to ricochet, but she'll not keep that up for very long. This cruiser is very poorly armored. Torpedo away. Starboard launcher against the battleship. But it looks like the torpedo immediately exploded when it hit the water. Oh boy. Yeah, that torpedo turned out to be a complete dud. Like, it didn't even have to hit the Moshun. It was just a dud right from the get-go. Moshun still has torpedoes on her port side. Yeah, her port side's loaded. Her starboard side is not. The Otawa still has three torpedo launchers. <sighs> this is turning into a fairly unpredictable fight. I really want to get the port side torpedo launcher from the Lazarev to deal some real damage against the Moshun. Because that's going to be the redemption of this ship. Torpedo away. Motion's trying to dodge. She can try all she will, but that's gonna hit. And that was a live one. Flooding on Motion. Lazara having some issues trying to actually land hits here. Buoyancy on Motion dropping to 13%, 12%. 11, 10. This could be it for Moshun. No, she seems to be able to get it under control, uh, holding it 8% buoyancy. 80 million for a battleship. Mine is 113. Jesus. Yes, her buoyancy is holding. Damn it. At this point, I gotta be careful not to get torpedoed on the Lazarev by the Moshun. Varna is coming back in, but due to her list, largely unable to bring her main guns to bear. So secondaries it is. We're punching a couple of holes in the motion, but it's not good enough. Her damage control is still 100%. Mine has dropped to 90%. This is a standard quarter screw, but I've lost 17%. Yes, main guns are operational. That's what I was hoping for due to the angle of the ship. The problem is I'm within 1.8 kilometer range and I have no rudder. So a torpedo attack could be really bad news. Lazarev has no further torpedoes. That's not fun. <clears throat> Defense to pen. It's really good. Armor piercing on the main guns, please. Oh, I don't want to be here. This is too close. And the Otowa is another big risk here. Because that thing is coming right at me. And I cannot turn. I can turn to port, but that would make the ship an even bigger target. Why are you suffering from an angle warning? I think motion can't shoot. Most of her guns have an angle warning. Let's switch to the Ottawa and see if we can take that out first. I really am concerned about Varna here. I positioned her so badly that she's really, really risky. 
And it looks like none of my four inchers actually have a oh shit. Have a chance. That's gonna hit a compartment that is not saturated. There she goes, 140 points of damage. And Ottawa has two more where that came from. However, she only has one launcher. Okay, we can't, we might be able to use that. She's now flooding. These things are pretty thin-skinned. This has got many bulkheads. Admiral, get back here. Varna, down to 27% buoyancy. Otoa's torpedo launcher is on the other side of the ship. Why is the Moshun suddenly getting involved? Turn to port if you can. Come on. I think the Varna is going down. And I'm not too sure if the Lazarev's going to be able to sink. Yeah, there goes the battleship. If the I can sink the Moshun all by myself. I think I can't. Especially considering I got, n well, insufficient amounts of ammo. Um, yeah, I don't think so, dude. So you just used your torpedo launcher. Let's see if we can punch a couple of holes in the Ottawa and at least take that one out. Come on. Don't get hit by the ten and a half inch if you want to live. Two hundred meters out, nobody can hit each other. This is a disgrace, an absolute disgrace. Go target something bigger. Do we even have any 4-inch guns left? Starboard side? No. We've got a couple of mains. <laughs> That's not really going to do it, I'm afraid. Destroying casemates is a really slow way to get that thing eliminated. What? Torpedo in the water? Okay, you're out of torpedo launchers. Well, you're out of torpedoes, period. <clears throat> How am I going to fix this situation? Stop. Oh, come on. Your list is not nearly that bad. Congratulations. You're now a stable firing platform. Parked. Accuracy, 91%. Motion taking some damage. The one thing I cannot really do to her is cause flooding. And that's exactly the thing that I need. Stop doing that. Ooh. Flooding? Really? Because we hit one of their torpedo launchers. Oh, that's amusing. Come on. Destroy another case, mate. There are several ways you can destroy a warship. You can eliminate the ship entirely, sinking structural integrity, or reducing structural integrity to none. You can uh, reduce her buoyancy. So causing her to sink. You can try to render it completely ineffective by causing flash fires. But you have the least impact on that. You can overwhelm it with fire. Extensive fire overwhelm. Or you can eliminate all the crew. What is my ship doing? That is one happy warship. There we go. Uh, you can eliminate the crew. Why is it suddenly foggy? The hell? That's new. I didn't know weather conditions could change in battle. Anyway, the plan now is to try and eliminate the crew. She's lost 29.5%. If I can get her to 45, I can eliminate the ship. The problem is the Ottawa has an opinion on that. And I don't have limitless amounts of shells. 
nor health on this ship. Let's switch to the Ottawa for a bit. Although, I'm really <clears throat> questioning my chances of actually causing any serious damage to her because she's so maneuverable. And my guns are not that good. Look at that, nothing hit. Go on. Oh shit, they just destroyed my main tower. Come on, I expect something. They destroyed another main gun. This is bad. <clears throat> I don't want to lose the Lazarev. But I want to keep her in the fight for as long as possible. Switch to the Moshun again. Considering our bad firing angle at the Ottawa. The ship has done a lot of damage, look at that. 17k damage done for a light cruiser. That's a lot. 31% crew lost. Go on. What's my pen? Like six inches if I park myself a kilometer away. The ship is pretty heavily armored, but her superstructure is not. So her superstructure could be the point that I can break through. Her structural integrity just refuses to fail. My guns don't deal enough damage for that. Destroy another funnel. That's superstructure. Killing funnels is superstructure. Circle the prey. Just make sure the prey doesn't suddenly open up with a ten and a half inch gun. Destroyed main tower. Well, well, well. There goes your damage control ability. Destroyed main main what? You destroyed her main gun? Really? Hardly. Okay. Whoa! I lost my crew. Oh boy, I was not keeping track of that. Oh boy. <clears throat> 27,000 victory points? Are you insane? Oh boy. This is bad. <laughs> this is real bad. I was expecting some victory points to be lost. But I thought we'd be pretty even. The war's not going well. We're gonna fight to the end. I will draw back this battle. Eventually. Yeah. So, um... Unrest is very high. Naval prestige is at an all-time low. Because I keep losing battles. I can design a new battleship. I'm not sure if that's going to fix anything. Uh, maybe I can refit the Admiralski class and make her do a little better. Because it's not a bad ship. I just need her to be more accurate. Okay, we're going to give you Krip 1 armor. Our bets are fine, into turps are fine, double hull would be lovely. Citadel 2. Reinforced bulkheads 1, that's all that's been invented. Capped shells. And now look at, let's say 1000 meter range, 29 inches of armor pen. 36, that's more like it, but I have a higher ricochet chance. TNT 1 please. Uh, and nose fuse H E to give these things. Well, what's the pen on these now? All these casemates, because I got a ton of those. Four inch casemates, six inches of pen. Cool. Increase the barrel length on those casemates. Increase the barrel length on all the guns. And see if we can make these things somewhat feasible. I only got a one coincidence rangefinder, electrical turret rotation. Uh, 
The armor scheme on this ship is fine. Maybe increase the main belt a bit more. So I can take slightly greater risks. I don't particularly care for torpedo launchers on this ship. But I hope that this is going to be a better version of the Admiralski of Seterov. Save that. And I know I'm not maxing it out, but I might need that later. So, time to refit some battleships. Regroup. Get those new DDs out there. And give the Japanese a real kicking, because it looks like this first war... is not quite going our way. Uh, refit. All of them. I know my shipyard probably... <laughs> a little over. We're gonna have to increase that as well. Okay, we're gonna have to do something about balancing out the shipyards, because at this rate it's going to be horrible. Um... Status. <clears throat> like, it's going to take too long. Suspend a couple of these. Now it's going to take two months. Excellent. The battleship Revel has been suspended. Oh, right. That's those two that I'm suspending. We got another CL coming out. Right. Let's modernize the other ships as well. I want to have another look at the scout class. I think the scout class did very, very, very well. This ship did a lot of work for me. Let's see if I can make it better. She's looking at about max displacement, but with better armor, that can get improved. Better engine. Hydraulic steering is fine. A balanced rudder is fine. She'll maintain her speed. Um, the point is the guns. We're going to go nose fuse to try and have things be put on fire. Turret rotation is fine. It can be slightly improved. Let's give her 18 inch torpedoes. And more. So she now has three side mounts. And with 18-inch torpedo, she'll deliver a much more serious blow to the enemy. Reduced complement of shells? I don't think so. Okay, armor. Uh, go for three, three, three. Ooh, is it this? Oh, shit, they're maxed out. I'm used to seeing like six inches of armor on a cruiser, but that's no longer a thing. Unfortunately. Max out the barrel length. Do I want 4.9 inch diameter guns? Because I don't think it matters that much. Let's make them a bit smaller. Giving them an 8 second reload. She's a mine layer. Yes. Coincidence rangefinder is fine. Uh, let's give her more crew. Because that last ship surrendered. Maximum bulkheads. There she goes. Okay. New version of the Scout class light cruiser. We got the Comrade Cat. I haven't seen these yet, so I can't exactly make an estimate of whether they'll perform or not, but this standard bulkheads thing and crowned crew quarters doesn't fill me with confidence. If I can sacrifice something and make sure the ship does better, I will happily do so. I think it had a barbette that was unavailable or something. Let's see. No, not a very small one. Medium. It says there's an error. But it doesn't say what the error is. I think it's this one. Because front tower 5 is not available yet. Front tower 4 is. There. Okay, max out that bulkhead. Uh, reduce that range. <laughs> We're not going to have to go very far from home anyway. Improve the armor quality. Better guns. Ballastite's fine. 300 tons available. This thing is very well armored. 5 inches. 3 inches of superstructure is probably pushing it. Let's go for 2. There. 
It's better than Zion. It's gonna take four months to refit, though, so I'll have to do that in phases, and I still haven't fixed the cramped crew quarters. Um, I'm already working on a new DD. I don't really care for the torpedo boats, so I don't need to refit those. So, that will be that. It's going to be a long, long, long overhaul process in order to keep these things refit. In order to keep everything going. And uh, we're at a pretty bad state. 5,000 victory points for me, 29,000 for the Japanese, almost 30,000. So I have a lot of work ahead of me, and I would hope you'll join me for those additional battles in the future. Because this battle is far from over. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what your thoughts are down below, and I'll see you soon for more battles.